Well, hello there. This is Father Dane, and as you can see, we are using Microsoft Flight Simulator 10 with iFly 737-800NG as the preferred aircraft. And we're going to take a flight today between OMDB, which is Dubai, and we're going to terminate at OBBI, which is Bahrain. Now a little word about my equipment here. I'm running an Intel board with three graphic cards and I've also got three monitors but I have not got them set up in a 2D surround sound or surround configuration. This is strictly three monitors, three individual monitors and you'll see why when we get into the program. I have all my charts here, all my approach charts my SIDS, my standard instrument departures from Dubai, and my stars coming into Bahrain. There's the keyboard for input, a yoke, of course. There's the flight simulator yoke and a mouse. Those are the only controls that I'm using here. Now, going online, we have a look at the high altitude routes between uh, Dubai and Bahrain and as you can see this is all free by the way it's all available online and it just shows that there are no no TAMs for the area everything seems to be clear there's our destination of Bahrain And this is from the internet, directly from the internet. Here's Flight Simulator. Here you can see is going in. And here's the startup. And here we are. Now here's the main screen directly in front. But on the left, I've put the uh, overhead panel because there's a lot of switches on this, a lot of controls that are needed uh, before, during, and even after the flight. On the right, I've put the pedestal and I've put the uh, main electrical, the radios and extinguishers, things like that. But in the middle, is the main view of the a scene from the pilot's chair. So this is actually what I'm flying with here. Three different monitors and three different views. Now I've made um, the aircraft of choice here United. <laughs> Don't know why. I just didn't like the iFly standard, I suppose. But this one seems a little bit more attractive. I would like to be able to get a Fly Dubai um, uh, livery sometime, but until then I have to make do with this. So there it is, the 737-800NG. Now here we are, here's the overhead panel, power is on, and there we've got and set the location. need that anymore now back to the overhead from battery power in a moment I'm going to go to some ground power now this is available in the simulator but right now I'm putting in the fuel uh, I'm putting in 3.91 in the number one tank and saying fill and the number two again the same amount 3.91 and fill that and in the center uh, we are putting in 2.18 because we need um, 
a total uh, of about 10 tons in order to do the flight. You look there on the on the screen, we're going to center it in just a moment, you can see the fuel beginning to flow in. There it's in, well, real time according to the flight simulator. Right, now let's go back to the overhead panel and back to the CDU. We're going to input the information. So here's our route, OMDB and OBBI for the destination. And just for fun, I'm putting in Fly Dubai's uh, actual flight number, <laughs> which is uh, FZ021. Uh, that's the Dubai to Bahrain route. Now I'm going to tune in and listen to what Fly, uh, what Dubai has. Dubai Airport Information Oscar, one two two five zero, wind two one nine or at five. Visibility greater than 20 miles. Sky condition clear. Temperature 32.26 QNH. Niner, Niner 8 ILS. Runway 30 right and ILS. Runway 30 left in use. Landing and departing. Runway 30 right and runway 30 left. There it is. That's my clearance. I'm going to be going out on runway 30 left. And there you can see uh, what the screen looks like. Fox, Foxtrot Zulu 021. And I put in all of the information for the route. It's all programmed in. Now we do the initialization, we've got that basic information to put in, 61.9, reserves, 15 on performance, flight level 240, transition altitude flight is 13,000. Lapse 5, 22.84, center of gravity, activate all of that. And by the way, this matches an actual flight between Dubai and Bahrain on this exact flight equipment, um, 737-800. So this is, this is following real world configurations. Now we set up the rest of the equipment.
Now it's time to start the APU. Have a look at the voltage, see when it comes up. And just wait for the lights to show. You can see the pressure has built up. Now it's receding just a little bit to equalize out. Right, APU started, switch over to the power, lead on, I'm being very cruel, I haven't got the air conditioning on. <laughs> And in Dubai, you would need it. First thing, you would need it. People going into that hot cabin, 40 degrees Celsius outside, my goodness me. Now just checking all the equipment. Right, it's now time to start the engines. Right engine starting. And now starting number one engine on the left side. they were the air conditioning starts up since we've now got both engines running we're going to run that from the engines and shut down the uh, APU the auxiliary power unit. Now we're going to do a pushback, only we're going to do that from within the little device that uh, iFly has set up. They have a little pushback. As you can see, I'm going to set the amount, I'm going to go back by 90 meters. Actually, I really needed 100. And then I want the 
push back to turn me to the right. So, um, I'm set to be pushed back and take the parking brake off and let's see what happens to the uh, little pushback truck over there. There it comes. Slight bump as it makes the connection and here we are having a look at it now from the out. Just a little turn here just to show the aircraft in a better light, if I might. Probes and position lights are on, as you can see. <coughs> and there's the turn, just a little shy of where I really want it to be, but it's it's close enough. And break loose and let the for the pushback truck disappear and get out of harm's way. And with lights on and uh, left indicator going. <laughs> oh, by the way, those broken lines, that's flight simulator showing me what the actual route is to get to the active runway. And so I'm going to follow that pretty much. Everything is set. Flaps are at level 5. And here we are trundling along the taxiway to get to the active, which is 30 left. It's a little tricky controlling the aircraft with the yoke. I'm sitting to the right of where the camera is, so it's uh, I'm a little scrunched up and not in my normal position. But here we are looking at it from the cockpit view. This is from the uh, captain's point of view. Going just a tad fast here, but um, I hope that there's no one out there with the speed camera. Open up the window, stick my left hand out as we're going to make a left turn here. Not really. But it would be rather fun. I tried making uh, this film with me sitting in my proper position where I was more comfortable with the controls but unfortunately my head kept getting in the way so that would be no good for a film.
coming up on the final stretch know where we're going now so I turned off the progressive as they called it the, uh, the progressive path it's switched off now I have a switch for that that uh, Microsoft puts in the program and in a moment I'm going to be at uh, the threshold of runway 30 left and asking for permission to take off. Ordinarily I would be doing an IFR flight. I'm going to be flying IFR but unfortunately I can't marry the flight plan with that within Microsoft for Microsoft to uh, the program to recognize so I do the best I can. Right, we have clearance, so let's move this 737 into position. Hopefully everybody in the back is sat down, strapped in, seats and tables in their upright position, etc, etc. Alright, winding up now to 40%. There we are. Push the toga, take off, go around, and pull power, and off we go down the runway. The gear is up and no red lights. Now we're on our way, following the programmed flight path on our way to Bahrain.
We're going to jump ahead a little bit in a moment. I'm getting within range shortly of Bahrain, so I've tuned in to ATIS to find out what's the active runway there at Bahrain. Here's what um, it says. come in on. We're coming in on runway 12 left. So there is a, uh, a procedure for this and it gets entered into the CDU. So we're flying, you know, uh, our nav on this whole thing to come in onto that exact runway. So let's see how well it matches up with the real thing here. Well, nearly real, at least real on this screen, shall we say. Now at this point we need to descend to 8000 in order to meet the requirements of the waypoint coming up. I'm doing this all by honor. I actually had a real life pilot from Fly Dubai that uh, has been giving me some instruction. I'm a bit thick, so he's been very, very patient, but. Um, uh, let's see how well it pays off because you're going to see whether or not I land or crash land and <laughs> there are two different things there aren't there. So here we are coming in onto uh, the final legs.
now I'm within range of the tower, it's time to make my intentions known. Um, as I said, I'm actually flying on VFR rules as far as the flight simulator is concerned, although flying IFR from inside the cockpit. So let's uh, ask Bahrain here for um, a permission to land full stop. Well, they've confirmed very nicely for us that we are going to go on a standard pattern to land on runway 12 left. If you look at the control plate at the front, you will see the runway stretching out there and the red line, of course, is the route that we're actually going to take. I'm going, the program is already in the aircraft, it's already been done, so I'm just going to let the aircraft fly the route as programmed and it should bring me it should bring me right in line with runway one two left and bring me right down the glide slope and um, with a bit of luck we'll actually land on it now we're making preparations here to descend even further because uh, one of the waypoints requires a 1500 feet um, uh, altitude in the approach. I've been given the barometric pressure in Q and H, so everything looks good, everything is set, altimeters are set, radios are set, so we'll have to see. That little island that you see in the above center, that's actually where the runway is at Bahrain. We're going to go slightly past that island, turn around, and then come back in to make the landing. So it will be interesting to see whether we actually do it. Right, just swinging in on the downwind leg. This is how it used to be done in the old days, before all of the fancy onboard computer equipment. In a moment, we'll be going on the base and then on a final. Let's see if it actually works out. I'm letting the aircraft do all of the work in this case.
Right, now we're beginning to turn onto the base leg. Somebody stick their hand out the left window. Make sure everybody knows we're about to turn left here. Don't want to break the highway code at this point. Ah, and it actually does it. All programmed to do it. Wonderful thing, this. now turning in towards the last bit before we get on to that final. I've just made the angle of attack towards the final approach a little bit uh, better for the aircraft traveling at this speed. And now the navigation has picked up the uh, approach. We're turning on to that uh, final approach. We'll acquire the glide slope in just a moment and then simply fly the glide slope all the way down to the runway. There's the runway up ahead on that small island. At least we're in line with the island. I don't know if we're going to be in line with the runway. We'll see in just a moment. There it is, there's our clearance to land, so it makes it official. And United One, that's me by the way, uh, is right now on the final approach. And we are on runway two, one two left, as you can see up ahead, there are two runways, one two right and one two left. Um, hopefully this aircraft is going to know that we want to be on the left one and not on the right one. Could be awkward otherwise.
500. down, go into reverse thrusters to slow us up, apply the brakes, wipe my brow, have a cup of tea, and then get ready to turn off. There's the gate I'm going to directly ahead. You just have to do a little dog leg, a little left and a little right, and then we'll line up with the gate. Then we'll wind down the engines, open up the forward hatch, and get the jetway attached, let all the passengers off to go do whatever passengers do. This is it. Welcome to Bahrain. <laughs> 